Now moving on to our first section that is the hip dislocation. As I told you, we will briefly discuss the dislocation of hip. It's all types, especially the anterior, posterior and the central type. In this section, we only briefly touch upon the central hip dislocation. And along with that, we'll discuss the isolated fractures with a greater or lesser drop, especially in the case of young athletes as well as older individuals. Now, if you see this is an X-ray, and if you're seeing this kind of an X-ray, although this is very classically, you can appreciate the femoral head is above and not at the level of acetabulum. But sometimes it's very obvious that this is a dislocated hip. Sometimes, unfortunately, it's very dubious. When we are viewing an X-ray pelvis, you have to look at certain things, especially if this is an AP view, you have to look at the pelvic ring first. If it's intact or not, then just look at the obturator foramen. Are they comparable bilaterally or not? And then comes the shunter line. Shunter line is of utmost importance because if you uh, draw a shunter line, it will be like this in case a complete picture but if it's broken on one side this means there's either dislocation or there is actually fracture of the head or neck of the female and that is why because the head is either subluxed or dislocated it's usually associated with high energy trauma most commonly it is always high energy trauma usually rarely it's associated with trivial falls and an unless the patient is older individual osteoporotic and there is already a tendency of uh, previous hip dislocations as well usually in conjunction with fractures of the femur now it could be associated with neck of femur fracture head of femur fracture it could be even associated with the shaft of femur fracture as well most commonly it is a polytrauma patient patient having an rta or who has sustained a high energy vehicle collision and usually associated with the chest injuries other bone fractures as well and may be associated with uh, one-sided there may be a hip dislocation a contralateral femur fracture or ipsilateral tibia fracture may be as well present usually associated with greater than 400 newtons of force required simply to distract the femoral head from the acetabulum so one thing for sure whenever there's a dislocation especially in the case of hip Definitely the mechanism of energy was such that it was a high energy trauma. Very rarely it happens that it's secondary to a trivial trauma, especially in the case if it's a young individual. Definitely high energy trauma can only precipitate such an event. Now coming to the dislocation of the hip, what is actually the criteria? How we define it, whether it's posterior or anterior central? That is actually the position of the femur at the time of trauma determines the dislocation pattern for example if a patient is going in a car and sitting like this as if you can see me suddenly there's a crash and the car crashes into uh, let's say uh, a truck or something sudden deceleration and the force is actually acting from the front <clears throat> there's this a uh, dashboard is actually coming back and crashing into the uh, person the usual mechanism would be if the patient would be sitting with knees flexed and the thighs, the legs slightly adducted and internally rotated, the mechanism would be such that that would actually result in a posterior dislocation and will push the head of the femur out of the acetabulum posteriorly. For example, if the patient was sitting in a position during the time in which the leg was a bit extended, it was externally rotated and a little bit abducted, now the forces would act on such a way that it would result in that kind of an anterior dislocation of the femur head. May be associated with simple uh, fractures, it could be simple dislocation, isolated dislocation as you just saw it in the previous x-ray, or it could be associated with the fractures as well. Now there's a rare term called a central, this although it occurs very rarely, that is if for example, if a person was sitting in a car and there was a side crash, that actually the car was hitting it right from the side, as a result the force was so much from the greater truck enter, it actually resulted in pushing of the femoral into the acetabulum. Yeah. Highly rarely it happens, it is not associated with fractures, it's always almost associated with the acetabular fractures as well as head, femoral head fractures as well. Now hip dislocations are, as I told you, briefly uh, defined into a posterior hip dislocation if it, the head dislocates posteriorly, anterior hip dislocation if it dislocates anteriorly, or central hip dislocation. Now coming to the central hip dislocation, as I just told you, the mechanism is actually important whether it will be anterior or posterior hip dislocation. A fall on the side or a blow over the greater trochanter can result in a central dislocation. 
forces femoral medially through the floor of acetabulum and as you know the floor of acetabulum is bone so if head is going into the acetabulum definitely this will either result in the fracture of the acetabulum or fracture of the head of the femur or it could be fracture of both of them so really a fracture associated with acetabulum uh, of the fracture of the acetabulum usually is always present in this distal femoral traction or how to treat this kind of syndrome although it's very rare as compared to the most common it is the posterior rarely it's the anterior and highly rare is usually the central but if it does happen then what we'll, we'll deal with it as you can appreciate it the force is acting from this and there is also associated neck of humor fracture as well when the force is acting this way there are two ways of pulling this head back because it has gone more medially one option is to apply a pin over the greater trunk and Will uh, push it more laterally, and as well as apply another pin at the, the distal femur and push it more longitudinally. So this is actually a force factor is such that it actually takes the head out of the central dislocation of the acetabulum. If inadequate, a lateral to pinteric pin can always be placed. Now first is always apply a longitudinal traction. If it comes out very well good. If it doesn't, apply a lateral traction pin over the greater trunk and push it more laterally so that it comes in. If it has gone too far in, then probably it is always associated with acetabular fracture. Then you have to see whether you need to treat the acetabular fracture or not. Now coming to isolated fractures of the trochanter. It may be associated with the, the patient may come to you with a history of hip pain and there may be no trauma at all. A patient may be a very young athlete and suddenly there was a history that he or she was running around uh, that she was exercising for something and this suddenly she was doing the sprint and suddenly she felt a pop and there was a severe pain after that from the hip. Usually that involves a vulgin type of a fracture, especially over the lesser as well as the greater trochanteric area. In adolescents, lesser trochanteric apophysis can be avulsed by the pull of the swass muscle because iliosuas is actually attached over here and when forceful flexion is actually occurred occurs at the hip joint especially during a sprint there is always a chance that this can as a trock can evolve from its surface if it's a very small piece you have to take a rest but if it's a large piece and actually whole of the muscle has actually evolved along with the lesser trock then probably some time of uh, operative treatment may be required as well but initially the treatment is always the rest in elderly, the separation of lesser trach usually is suspicious of metastatic malignant disease. This could be a chondrosarcoma which may be present over there and this can actually result into this kind of a problem. And especially if it is an elderly individual because muscles are weak by that time and then this kind of things occur, it must be evaluated for always a metastatic disease. Now coming to the isolated fractures of greater trochanter. In the elderly, part of the greater trochanter can be fractured because there are certain muscles which are actually uh, attached to it, especially if you see the greater glutei are actually uh, attaching over the and substantial facial lata is also attaching over here as well. The X-ray should be scrutinized for subtle association with intertrochanteric and intercapsular fractures. What is important is it's not associated with uh, Boyd and Griffin type 1 fracture in which there is undisplaced intertrochanteric fracture or it could be a garden type 1 fracture when you see there is an undisplaced neck of femur fracture. So that is very important especially in the old case there may be due, this is all may be due to simple trivial trauma and this trivial trauma can result in actually uh, a false sense that probably this is a greater trochanteric avulsion fracture and rather it would have been a, either the neck or the intertrochanteric fracture. So when we are viewing x-ray for example if this is the x-ray if you can appreciate it, yes, there is a greater trochanteric avulsion, but if you see this is a suspicious line going right over here. Now, in that case, it must be patient will be clinically evaluated. This could be a simply, we may need to get a CT as well, because this may be, it looks like over here, it stops, but it could be a whole line which may be leading to an undisplaced Boyd and Griffin type 1 intracontanteric fracture as well. <coughs> So absent displacements is actually noted if it is uh, the fracture is there is no associated neck or uh, a fracture and displaces less than one centimeter it can be managed conservatively but if it's a very large piece and it's actually the lot of muscles are attached then we can simply fix it with a, a screw as well. <coughs>
Uh, coming to the treatment, it depends whether the piece is very small or a large, and then whether the age of the patient is young and athletic or patient is old age. Functional recovery is usually good. Active abduction is usually avoided, especially in the case of greater trochanteric fracture and patient mobilized with protected weight bearing because there are gluteal muscle attached with it as well, especially good is medius and minimus. So that you have to be very careful that you have to start the movement early as well. But sometimes you may need a fixation with a screw as well. Occasionally, greater trochanteric may be fractured. Fragment, if it's widely separated, a young individual, then can be fixed back with a cancellous screw or simply what the screw can be placed as well. Like you place it in a position, approach it, apply a screw over it, and then we can uh, give a uh, patient can be rested for a few weeks later on. Partial weight bearing can be started and eventually getting into full weight bearing because the, once the patient has a screw in, until unless the bone is united, there is always a chance that screws and they pull out once the patient starts the uh, movement again. Our other option is instead of going with a screw, we can go for tension band wiring or a trochanteric plate as well. <clears throat> for example, if it's associated with intertrochanteric uh, fracture, then probably trochanteric plate would be a better option because that is going to deal with that fracture as well as the fracture of the greater troch as well. In this section, we have briefly covered the different types of dislocation. As I told you, depending upon the mechanism, it could be anterior, posterior, it could be central as well. We briefly discuss if it's usually central associated with acetabular fractures. And the best way is to first apply the longitudinal traction. And if still the head is not coming out, we can apply lateral traction pin so that the central dislocation can be saved. Once that is the central dislocation is reduced, then we can think of the whether acetabular fractures need to be fixed as well or not. We have briefly discussed the fractures of lesser troch as well as the greater troch. What is important is that in a young individual, there may be avulsion fractures due to the muscle pull. Mostly can be treated with bed rest and analgesics. While in the case of elderly, if there is a greater trochanteric or lesser trochanteric involvement, one must keep in mind that lesser troch may be associated with a malignant disease and greater troch may be associated with this neck of femur fracture or intertrochanteric fracture as well. So one has to be careful in evaluating both clinically as well as radiologically. Depending upon if it's a small piece can be treated conservatively, but if it's a large piece can be fixed with a cancellous screw or touch band wiring. Thank you very much. Keep watching Scardia.com.